Good afternoon, and welcome to today's special edition of What's Wrong with Our City. It happens every day. Riders show up at a bus stop expecting their bus to show up on time. They expect to wait five minutes, but they end up having to wait for 15 minutes, and suddenly, two buses show up. This phenomenon is called bus bunching, and it's real. We recently received a complaint from a dissatisfied bus rider who experiences this almost on a daily basis. Here's what he has to say. I take the bus like every day uh, at Delormia and Bobe to come downtown for school. And what happens is sometimes I'll show up to the bus stop and then these two buses arrive back to back. And the first bus is full and the second bus is pretty empty. I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is really inefficient. Some other times I'll get to the bus stop and I'll see two buses just take off and I've just missed them. And then I'll have to end up waiting more than 10 minutes for the next bus that comes. And eventually that bus will come and it's just two full that barely get on and people further down the line, they can't even get on. So what is bus bunching exactly? Bus bunching is when buses on the same route that are scheduled to be at regular intervals apart end up running the route together. Some transit agencies define bus bunching as two buses running within 60 seconds of each other. How does this happen? Usually buses leave at regular frequencies, but along the way, something may cause delays to one of the buses. This may be due to an accident, traffic, or an unexpected amount of passengers boarding and alighting the bus. If the delay is long enough, the bus behind it will catch up and the two buses will continue running the same route together. So the bus line that Tom was referring to is Route 18, which runs along Bobien. As you can see on the map, the route is quite long, about 11.5 kilometers and roughly 45 to 50 minutes. When we took the bus during the morning and the afternoon peaks, we witnessed for ourselves that the bunching usually starts during the middle of the line around Pinif and St. Michel. However, we did not see any situations that would have led us to believe that punching will occur, even though it still did. So, Dr. Smith, uh, I hear you're an expert on public transit. What are uh, some solutions that SDF should consider to solve its bus punching problem? Okay. Well, the thing is, I don't think we can solve the problem, but we do have the duty to reduce it as much as possible for um, SDM's uh, customers. So, a lot of people say we should just schedule more buses to fill in those gaps. That might help, but it sure, certainly would not be cost effective. It costs a lot of money uh, and would not be super efficient. Another common solution uh, that is already used by the SDM uh, part is uh, use timing points. So, at these points, buses are required to depart um, at a certain time from these points. Uh, this, in effect, introduces slack into the system, uh, ensuring buses can make up lost time stemming from the random disruptions we discussed earlier. So um, the problem with this is you can't always guarantee on-time performance with these timing points as you can only insert so much slack um, and there won't always be enough slack to deal with um, unforeseen problems. Uh, pauses do slow, these pauses do slow the route down and um, create the perception for riders on the bus that, we're stop that the bus is stopping for no reason and um, really they're waiting to adhere to the schedule. Uh, it also doesn't allow for um, buses that are running behind schedule to catch up to where they should be. Um, so another academic, Daganzo, proposed using dynamic holding times based on real-time travel information provided through GPS. Um, to reduce bus bunching. So this would still use control points uh, at which buses would be instructed to hold or continue or even speed up um, by skipping stops. That would definitely confuse or frustrate riders on the buses, but it would maintain even headway. Um, this, because it does involve GPS, could be part of the SDM's expansion into bus, um, smart bus technology. They propose more control points so that small corrective actions can be taken throughout the routes to keep the system flowing smoothly and it would deal with problems before they get too large. Um, some easier solutions that the SDM could consider and should consider include off-board uh, off fare collection, speeding up the Opus Reader's processing time, allowing all door boarding, implementing and, and implementing and enforcing bus lanes and other bus priority measures. So this would just help improve the reliability and efficiency of the SDM's network. Thank you very much, Dr. John Smith. Hopefully the SDM will hear this and consider the uh, suggestions that our expert has provided. Thank you for joining us on this week's special edition of What's Wrong With Our City. My name is Karen Allot, and we invite you to tune in again next week as we interview the president of the SDM, Philip Schnaub, and hear his response to this issue.